I'm investigative reporter Shannon Butler in Orlando. For more than a decade, I've been covering the disappearance of Michelle Parker. She was a beautiful 33-year-old mother of three, but on November 17, 2011, she had dropped her twins off at their father's house. It happened just after an episode of The People's Court starring the couple aired. The question was, was this a clue or coincidence? Hey, Dad. Um, it's about 8.40. This is Michelle on Wednesday morning. I know that you're at work, but call me when um, you have lunch or you have break or at the end of your day. Brad Parker didn't know it at the time, but soon he would realize this was the last time he would hear his daughter's voice because the next day, Michelle Parker disappeared. In the, those early hours, what did you think about what was happening here? In the beginning, we weren't exactly sure what was going on. We, we knew that she was missing, but we weren't sure why she was missing. And, and then as the evidence began to mount that she was missing, not of her own accord, it became scary that this could happen in 2011, that some, someone could just disappear. On November 17, 2011, Michelle Parker dropped her three-and-a-half-year-old twins off at their father's house. It was something that she had done dozens of times before. But this day was different because she didn't make it home to meet her 11-year-old son as he got home from school. Her family became worried when she didn't answer their calls, and her whereabouts even more suspicious when she didn't show up for a bartending shift at a Sanford bar that night. These litigants were together for five years, engaged with twins. That same Thursday afternoon, Michelle Parker and her ex-fiance were on this episode of the People's Court. The court battle was over a $5,000 ring that Parker tossed after a fight with Dale Smith. In the episode, the couple hurled accusations at each other and fought nastily. A court reporter called their relationship a fatal attraction. Was this just coincidence or a clue? He gets pretty malicious and vindictive, and he's a mean person, especially when he's been drinking. Any of the problems that we've ever had, it's always been alcohol-related. She threw the ring, and it bounced over the railing and down nine floors. It's been a, a hell of a roller coaster ride, and it's poison, and we're done. When she left the salon, she ran an errand for me. I needed color. She went to the store, brought it back, went out the door, turned around, and I said something to her, I said, oh my God, I said, it's almost, I don't know, one o'clock or two o'clock. I think that people's court thing is airing today. And she said, I don't ever want to see it. It was the most humiliating day of my life. I don't care. Parker had only been gone for a few hours, but her family was already worried. So her brother Dustin texted her around 4.30 p.m. that afternoon to ask her where she was. He got an immediate response, just one word, Waterford. It suggested she may be in Waterford Lakes on Orlando's east side, but that just didn't make sense to her family. I called Dale, but his answering machine honestly sounded like a foreign language. It was all garbled and it didn't make sense, so I thought I had the wrong number. So that's when I called his mom. And she said what? She said, I asked her if Dale was there. Um, I needed to talk to him and that, um, Michelle was with him earlier that day. Was she still with him? And she told me, I'm in bed. Well, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. She was never friendly to me. And I made up a lie. And I said, listen, Austin's hurt. He needs stitches. We have to go to the ER. I need to talk to Michelle. I need to talk to Dale. At that time, he was home. And he came right to the phone. He was at his house. He was at his so house. she called him to tell him that. Yeah. He said that he had been at his dad's warehouse and I said, "Listen, Michelle's Michelle's not at work. Michelle's not answering her phone. Michelle's not home. Michelle's not home. Something's happened to Michelle." He goes, "Uh, she said she was going shopping or something." So then he said, "I think she was going to uh Waterford." He did. What was on the cell phone? The one word that was on the cell phone. When her brother texted her, said, where are you at? I didn't know that at the time, but connect those dots. He said to you. He said to me, she said she was going shopping or something. 
uh, water, at water, Waterford. Because when she left my salon, she said, I'm so tired, I just want to go home and take a nap. I'm going to drop off the babies, I'm going to go home and take a nap. In my heart, I know she's out there somewhere, and we need her. We need to find her. We still need searchers, we still need the flyers. And this is a sad day, really, you know? But I think it was inevitable. I first met Michelle Parker's mother and the rest of her family outside the Orlando Police Headquarters. They were there reporting her missing, but the family had already been on a frantic search for Michelle Parker and her car. Her car so recognizable because her company logo was on the back. Hours after that meeting, Orlando Police found her Hummer at a condo complex near the mall at Millennia, but that company logo had been scraped off. The car was found quickly, which we thought would be so helpful in this situation, but it has not been helpful to you? I can't answer that. Why? Because I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. There, there may be something there. There may not be something there, but I need to keep that. Is there some evidence, do you believe in this case, that if you got a confession, if you found her, um, if, if there was an eyewitness, that you could finally close this? In every homicide or missing person case, there's always one or two items that the detective will, will hold on back, will hold back on. Stuff that we do not release to the media, stuff that the media ne never finds out about. We always hold on to one or two cases, one or two points to keep that information so that if we get a confession or if we get an, an eyewitness, we can collaborate that information as being true or false information based on one or two key pieces of information. Every case should have those one or two points that, that they hold back on. So is that a yes? That's a yes. Search after search after search provided no clues and her family continued to plead to the public for their help. The best thing I can do is to do what we're doing right now. Just keep telling people, we need your help. We need your help. This girl's missing. We need everybody's help to find her. You know, it's a needle in the haystack. It was 11 days after Michelle Parker went missing when then Orlando Police Chief Paul Rooney announced this. He is our primary suspect. There are no other suspects that I'm aware of. And he's still the only suspect named. But the People's Court episode wasn't the only issue that Michelle Parker and Dale Smith had. In 2009, they went through a custody battle and she filed a domestic violence injunction saying he had a violent outburst in front of their kids. Smith does have a criminal record. In 1997, he was charged with a felony battery. In 2001, he was in the Marines, but was court-martialed for a different domestic battery charge. Let's just say that Dale is the only suspect you find at the end of this, and he's not as cooperative as some of the folks uh, would like to be. Is he cooperative with you now? I have not spoken to Dale Smith in about 10 years. Have you tried? Yes. He has declined? Correct. Sometimes it seems like it was forever ago. And then if, like today, talking to you, seems like yesterday, you know? Or whenever I look at her picture just a little bit too long, I have to look away because I get emotional and I feel so helpless. We sent messages to the cell phone number we had for Dale Smith. He has not responded to our request for an interview, but the attorney who represented Smith in those initial weeks sat down with us. When law enforcement wanted to speak to him, he let them in his, his, his residence. He let them investigate from top to bottom. Anything they requested, he turned over voluntarily. He's never denied that Michelle Parker was there dropping off his children. He's no, never fact, denied. There's even video of that. Uh, as far as her coming into the, into the, um, uh, with the videotape of her coming into the area. So that, that was never in dispute. Does he know where she went after that? 
No, nobody does. That's, that's the, the great mystery. You represented him when DCF had briefly taken his, his children away after he was named a suspect in, in the case by police. We, we scheduled for the next day so that it was a, a, a peaceful. And then, he, of course, he had the children back because there was no proof that was produced in court that he had anything to do with any of this. And the day we went to court, because the DCF people had given me the twins the night before, and I had to be at court at 9 o'clock in the morning, after that thing, you remember, it's on camera. I went over and I hugged him. And the only reason I did that was to let him know I didn't do this. This was all DCF. Are you okay? And he started to cry. November of 2011, where were you? Uh, I was a task force agent at the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation. Um, I was in charge of the electronic surveillance unit. I remember her phone did ping in some of those areas along the way. What do those pings tell somebody like you? Well, they can establish a movement pattern. Um, they can corroborate someone's testimony or it can you know, blow a hole in their testimony. So that's, you collect all the data and take it from there. Yeah, it was on the, I think it was on the left side of the bridge here, coming up. It was this bridge here? Under the theory that they had a fight at home, mm -hmm. you know, she was taking control of or whatever, and he was leaving and coming back to his dad's house, maybe to confide, he would come this way, east to west, and the driver's side would be flipped around. And I remember it wasn't in a very deep part of the lake. Because they were able to get the, uh, the, the phone was still registering, that's how they found it. So that's why I think they were slowing down and... And tossed it. Tossed it. If it wasn't for you, would they have known that? Maybe eventually? Well, they found it on their own means. It just happens that I and another task force agent were discussing it. Sure, about the cut through? About the cut through and where it could be dumped. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, they went right to it. Why were you looking at that bridge or that lake? Based on where Dale lived and where he was going at that time. But looking at the grand scheme, if you're looking from the air, looking down, that bridge in that city was a needle in a haystack, it seemed. I remember how surprised we were that you, knew, that you guys found that phone under that bridge. Was it not that surprising to you? I trust the technology, and I knew that the guys at FDLE were utilizing their mechanisms to try to locate um, information. I wasn't surprised that that's, that's where it ended up, somewhere along that, that corridor, um, in between Conway and, and Orange Bossman Trail and through that neighborhood, because I grew up in that area. I grew up in Belle Isle. So I knew that that was a back way for a lot of people to cut through. And um, I, I mentioned it, they, they concurred, and lo and behold, that's where the phone was found. That was the last big break in the case. As this has been going on, what, a decade now? Do you still believe that he is the prime person of interest in this case, Dale Smith? About a year ago, the Orlando Police Department started a, cold, a dedicated cold case unit and my purpose in examining every case in the cold case unit is to look at it fresh. Um, is Dale a suspect? Of course he is a suspect, but I, w I want to keep an open mind and I want to make sure that I make sure that everyone is a suspect until I can eliminate them. Um, I know that in, in the initial investigators did a phenomenal job and they, they believe that Dale Smith was the sole suspect. I want to look at it from a different point of view. I want to look at it from everyone is a suspect. Doesn't that add more work to your, to your plate instead of just zoning in, trying to connect 
her and him in this situation? It's not about the level of work, it's about getting justice for Michelle. And it's about, it's about making sure that we get it right. It's about making sure that we get all the, the right answers. If he's not a suspect and we dedicate years into look, looking in, into Dale Smith, shame on us if it's someone else. But you still believe he could be the suspect? There's a substantial amount of circumstantial evidence that shows that Dale Smith could have been involved. Did you track his cell phone? Uh, I can't, you know, go into the details of the investigation on that side of it. You can't tell me what technology used on Dale? There was technology used that has never been used before in an Orange County case. Can you tell me what that technology is? No. How come? The records are sealed by court. On what technology you used? On the search warrant to get to utilize the technology, yes. Two years after Parker disappeared, Orlando police released this video of her Humvee at a red light around 8.55 p.m. on November 17, 2011. It was captured just a mile from where her car was found. Police were hoping it would trigger someone's memory. They ask me all the time, where's my mommy? In 2013, Michelle Parker's mom filed a wrongful death suit against Dale Smith. I'm mad, and Michelle deserves this. Last week, Stewart filed this wrongful death lawsuit against Smith, the sole suspect in the case. It alleges Smith committed a wrongful act and caused the death of her daughter. But he hasn't been arrested, and Parker's body never found. But that case was dropped. Her lawyer tells us it was a difficult one to win. At the same time, she headed to Tallahassee. She would want those kids to have a relationship with us. Stewart started petitioning lawmakers for a grandparents' rights bill last summer. Hundreds of people signed on with her. The 13-page bill would require grandparents to prove that their grandchildren are being harmed mentally or emotionally by not seeing them. If mediation fails, the court would order a psychological evaluation of the child. I want these lawmakers to understand that it is so important for families who have been together since almost day one to not be torn apart like this. But she was told her grandchildren declined. Yvonne Stewart was behind the Grandparents' Bill of Rights, a law that would allow grandparents to see their grandchildren in situations like this. What makes that case so hard? That we can't find her. Do you think Michelle Parker could still be alive? No. You don't? No. You don't think she's? Based on what I know about Michelle Parker, she would never have left her family in a, in a thousand years. There's no way, in my opinion. Do you know how Michelle Parker was killed? No, I do not. Does your evidence tell you that? No, it does not. Does it, does it tell you she's dead? No, I think that's more of a com common sense. What will it take to solve this, do you think? Finding her? At this point, it would take either a confession or an eyewitness who we do not know about or some physical evidence that we have ov overlooked. I can't imagine, though, that the physical evidence has been overlooked. I mean, you guys have been working this case pretty well for 10 years. I am 100% convinced there's no physical evidence that has not been looked at. I, I, but again, I want to keep an open mind. Never say never. Never say never. And you just try to get through life and take it one day at a time or one minute at a time. And you just try to make sense of why this happened and you can't. So at some point you just kind of have to like let it go. But there's not a day that goes by several times a day that I don't have closure and that the right thing hasn't happened to the person who's responsible.